The Prime Minister leads a delegation to more islands impacted by the storm. On his agenda today, the nation's second city. But yesterday, he visited islands in the central Bahamas. That's where the Hurricane Advisory Council got a first-hand look at the damage in Cat Island and Long Island. The team is made up of representatives from the Ministry of Works, NEMA, Red Cross, Social Services, the Defense Force, and other government agencies. LaDon Davis traveled with the team and tells that farmers lost lots of crop in Long Island and storm surge caused a big problem on Cat Island. Just days after Hurricane Sandy battered the central Bahamas, assessment teams were dispatched to those islands hardest hit by the storm. In Long Island, Prime Minister Perry Christie talked about the importance of protection from the seas. When we got to this site here, the question was, um, it needs obviously a seawall, um, because you can see how low it is here, and you can see when a hurricane or storm coming from this direction goes in, and even though there's higher land here. And so as we move around, we are identifying areas that are vulnerable areas. Island Administrator Therese Boodle Bethel agrees. She says severe flooding in low-lying areas on the island is a major concern for residents, but is thankful that the island was spared from any further destruction. The structures have fared well. We have shingle laws and minor roof damage for some of the homes. Um, some of the homes that had pre-existing conditions, they didn't fare too well, but we saw that the structure itself was already compromised. But going towards the south, um, um, from, for the most part, the water issue um, being low-lining issues and the debris and the road. Some relatively bad news for the farming industry, though, as Hurricane Sandy caused major damage to crops like these bananas and vegetables. But according to Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources V. Alfred Gray, farmers should be able to get government assistance once an assessment is completed. What I intend to do is to have agricultural officers visit Long Island between now and uh, Thursday next week, uh, spend a day or two together with those officers who live here so that we can get an independent assessment of the totality of the damage and the extent to which we are able to assist them in getting back on their feet again. One of those farmers impacted by the storm is Schofield Miller. He says he lost thousands of dollars worth of crops stretched across his two-acre farm. While this is not the first time his farm was hit by a storm, Miller says he is looking forward to the government's assistance. The last hurricane, all of these, um, just like they are now, everything was to the ground, level to the ground. And I just went through and cut out all the trees and threw them out on the outside. And these are the suckers that came up. Now that's the same thing I'm planning to do with these. And uh, another eight months I'll begin to get bananas again. But this is the third, well, I would say the third time. Just moments ago, we touched down here in Cat Island and like the events of Hurricane Irene. The storm surge has actually destroyed the thoroughfare once again here in Cat Island during the wake up of Hurricane Sandy. Now I've been talking with government officials, and they are planning to once again restore the road here in Cat Island. You know, if we go ahead and repair the road as is, and another storm comes, or even if it's a nor'easter, the road is going to get washed away. Um, we're going to be, we're going to end up with the kind of damages, the kind of coastal erosion that we see. Uh, the way we solve that problem is to do what the government was engaged in, which is building a seawall to try and protect the coastal roads as much as possible. But at the end of the day. Ultimately, what is necessary for us in much of the family islands is that we have to relocate roads uh, more inland. Now, coastal erosion due to strong storm surges and severe flooding were major challenges in Cat Island. While driving, we noticed this newly constructed home adjacent to the shoreline had collapsed. But ironically, though, the house that Nima built was still standing. Island Administrator Dawn Cornish says despite the impact, there was minimal damages. We had... Um most of our damage along the coast, heading between Smith's Bay, which is right up the street, and Stevenson. And that was primarily just the, um, the tidal surge coming in, and it affected the power lines and BTC's lines as well. Um, the roads are passable for the most part, with the exception of one of the poles that came down in the Stevenson area. And when I was up there earlier, they had a backhoe, and they were trying to raise it because they have some issues um, with equipment at BC, apparently. 
but power has been restored to a portion of the island. It may take a few weeks, months or even years before farmers fully reproduce their crops in Long Island and for the roadway in Cat Island to be fully repaired. But officials of the Hurricane Advisory Committee say they will work swiftly to ensure that everyone directly affected by the storm not only gets back to normalcy but receive the assistance they are entitled to. LaDawn Davis, ZNS News Network.